Perfect forward secrecy, or just simply forward secrecy, is a property of an encryption system that prevents an attacker from decrypting previously recorded sessions, even after the private key of the server is leaked. I don't know, guys, if you remember the few years ago when the heart bleed problem, when OpenSSL happened, and a lot of private keys got leaked, server private keys got leaked, and this problem was surfaced, right? So in this video, I want to talk about perfect forward secrecy. What is exactly this? And instead of talking about theory and theoretical stuff, right, I'm going to talk about the problem, the actual problem that led us to invent this thing that's called perfect soft sec uh, perfect forward secrecy. There's nothing in software engineering that is just there for the sake of being there. There's always a reason, there's a problem, and we solve it, okay? I want you always to understand that, okay? So let's go over it. We're gonna go through uh, TLS 1.2 and older SSL3 and everything, TLS 1.1, SSL3, anything. This has had this problem with perfect forward secrecy, the lack of perfect forward secrecy. Okay, we're gonna go through the problem, I'm going to explain what perfect forward secrecy actually mean, right? Or just forward secrecy. I'm going to talk about Diffie-Hellman. We did talk about Diffie-Hellman in TLS 1.3, but uh, sure, why not? Let's just discuss them one more time, right? And then finally, we're going to talk about TLS 1.3. So if you're interested to know what this thing is, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein. In this channel, we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time. I upload a new video and if you have other videos that you'd like to see I'd love to hear your opinion in the comment below with that said let's just jump TLS 1.2 and anything prior to that what's the problem so you guys know probably that I have a client I have a server let's say I want to make a GET request I want to establish an HTTPS session before I do my GET request so I know the server, I know the IP address, I know the port, I know all that jazz. The first request, right, is say client hello. That's the TLS handshake, remember? It's a TLS 1.2, say there will be two round trips, but sure, it's slower. And the client hello is going to ask, hey, I support uh, these key exchange algorithms. I support Diffie-Hellman, I support RSA, I support all this jazz. And I also support symmetric algorithms, AES, DES, Blowfish, probably not DES, but Blowfish, all that thing, right? Let's agree on both, right? All these options, send it, let me know. And also, by the way, server, please tell me your certificate so I can find if you're shady or not, okay? So, the server says, okay, let's say the server is gonna serve, send you back a server hello and says, hey, this is my public key. There is, there is a file here that has my certificate and my public key please use it to encrypt anything in the future and let's 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 agree on stuff right and by the way for the key exchange let's use rsa right and for the symmetric key let's use aes all right 256 right so we agree on that and then this the client that's the old stuff guys all right the client decides to you know what i'm gonna generate this symmetric key for you this master symmetric key, right? Which we're gonna use both to decrypt and encrypt messages. And remember, guys, if you if you want to know what what the difference between public, private versus symmetric or asymmetric key encryption, I made a video about encryption. I really encourage you to go watch that because just to know what's the difference and why would you want one over the other. Okay. So now I have a private key, right? I have the symmetric key. I need this golden beautiful key to reach the server. I cannot send it unencrypted because remember, we don't we cannot encrypt anything, right? But I can encrypt it with the public uh key of the server, which is the certificate, right? So I'm going to go ahead and encrypt it. And now it's encrypted. It's with a with a padlock of a pink padlock, right? Assume that this is now encrypted with the public key. And guess what? If it's encrypted by a public key, only the server can decrypt it because it has the corresponding private key. Even this guy cannot decrypt it because, yes, it, it's the one who encrypted it, but nobody can decrypt it except the one who has the private key. It's just an asymmetric encryption. All right? So we did send the symmetric key. That's the problem here, okay? 
We did send it. Yes, it's encrypted. Hussein, it's encrypted. Why do you care, right? Even if someone sniffed here, they're going to see garbage. We'll come to that. Okay, we'll come to that. So they say that, and then the server received it, and they go ahead and poof. I'm going to use the private key, decrypt it, and I got the symmetric key, right? So the server now received successfully the symmetric key. Okay. Now the server says, all right, cool. I got it. I think I got everything. Let's go ahead and start communication, right? So this, this is one thing bad about TLS 1.2, which is uh, you have four requests, two round trips just to do this thing, okay? And I talked about TLS 1.2 versus 1.3 benefits. I'm going to reference the video here. But now let's continue. I'm going to use my symmetry key. I'm going to make my get request. I'm gonna, I want to visit google.com slash, right? I'm, I'm typing my search results, right? And then I, I want to search for something and I encrypt it and I send it and I'm safe because I just encrypted it. Anyone in the middle, right? They cannot, because they see garbage now, right? Because it's encrypted with this symmetry key, right? So we received it and the server will give back the headers or whatever, right? The index HTML, whatever. So that's, that's, that's the TLS 1.2. What's the problem with this? What's the problem? So many problems, right? Let's assume someone here is sniffing, right? And what does that mean, right? It means that they did a man in the middle attack and they pretended to be the server, the, the network router, and they got all the ARP requests, right? All the Mac frames coming to them so they can sniff it and they pretend to be the router and they send it to the actual router. So they, they actually record everything that you were sending, okay? Let's assume they are doing it, right? And you have no idea that they're doing that. So you sent first, remember that? That's the encrypted symmetry key that you sent it in the air. And he got this. This guy got it, okay? He got it. No problem. You say it's encrypted. He cannot decrypt it because to decrypt that, he needs the private key, which he doesn't have, right? So this guy is smart. He's just like, hey, I'm going to just sit here and record stuff. I'm going to record everything. Yes, I cannot encrypt it, but I'm going to save it in a, in a file, right? And I keep it. And then you start searching how to get six packs and all these search term that you think it's encrypted. Okay, sure. And then you get a result and then you say, hey, show me Anna Hathaway X, right? You, you have a crush on Anna Hathaway, right? He's just, all right. Nobody can see this still, right? But this guy still, he's just sniffing encrypted stuff, right? And then you say, hey, how to get a girlfriend because you're lonely and you, you want a girlfriend, right? Or a boyfriend, right? It's just that then, yeah, you start searching. And then this guy decides to, let's just record this stuff. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I don't have the encryption, the private key, but I don't have anything. I'm going to record it and save it. I'm going to save it that this this guy, and this is the session, and I just recorded it. A few months later, the same server had a, had a bug in it. And you guys remember the heart bleed problem. The buffer over problem will allow an attacker to ask the the server to give you more data, right? So essentially it's reading more data in the memory and then just returning everything, right? And that's, that key return string, right? Might contain the private key sometimes, right? Because it's used very frequently on the backend, right? So it's, it's cached somewhere in the memory. So, so sometimes you can, you have an idea to get that private key, which is that's the heart bleed in a nutshell, okay? So the, this guy, got the private key. This is few months later. This is all the way, right? A few months later, he managed to get it, right? And he has it now. And he comes back to your conversation. He says, okay, that's the first message. That looks like the key, right? The symmetric key. I have the private key. I can decrypt that. He decrypts it. And he gets the private key, the, the, the symmetric key. And guess what? He takes the symmetry key and start decrypting your messages. Ooh. Oh, you want to get six pack. Okay. No, you're 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 self-conscious, all right. Okay. What is this message? Oh, you like Anna Hathaway. Okay, I might send you some ads there. I might consult sell your information to some people that you like Anne Hathaway. All right. And then let's see. Oh, oh this guy is lonely. Oh, I might not do anything to him then. Okay, so yeah, that's essentially a not 
perfectly forward encryption algorithm or encryption key. So let's talk about perfect forward secrecy. Perfect forward secrecy is ability, even if this creepy John, if he recorded my encrypted messages, even if that private key is leaked, nobody can, even him, cannot see my stuff, right? So that's called perfect forward secrecy in the future, right? It's, it's secret even in the forward. I don't know why they called it forward secrecy. That's a weird name, okay? But it's just like future secret. I don't know. I'm going to call it my own name. All right. So what the idea for perfect forward secrecy is do not use the private key for encryption. The private key for the server, don't use it because it's long term and it's scary to use it for encryption because people if they got it somehow right again it's not easy to get it but if someone gets it then it's a problem right and yes do not use long-term private key for this encryption use it only to verify that you're actually the who you are saying you are okay so that's it you only use it for authentication right and uh Especially with with the the idea of the cer certificate authority and the what is it called and the online certificate status protocol stapling, you know, which is the message that you uh, sign the server sign if the server supports it to to valid validate the certificate, all that jazz, right? All right, and each session, and by session I mean the whole conversation generates brand new keys, right? Every session generates a brand new key, so it's not one uh, session. It's so it's not one session. It's not one key for everything, right? So it's ephemeral. So that's just always regenerate, regenerate, keep regenerating, right? And that's a problem, right? And then uh, TLS one point three, right, forces the users, the clients, to use always Diffie Hellman because Diffie Hellman is perfectly forward secret right so because you can go forward and and uh, we'll go through the film in a minute so let's go through the film we talked about the film but i'm gonna talk about it again the film essentially is a key exchange algorithm it's just the goal of the algorithm not, is not to encrypt stuff it's to exchange keys it's to exchange this golden key so both of guys have it right and instead of encrypting the actual key and sending it encrypted that's dangerous stuff right because it might get someone might actually decrypt this message in the future and that could be a problem so what you do essentially is you do this that both the client and server agrees and they generate two private keys and one public key okay and there is like a better uh, video uh, from a natural professor that talks about Diffie Hellman, right? And the mathematica of it. It's way above my head. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not good at math, to be honest, right? He's talking about the details. If you're inter guys interested about the actual math of it, I'm gonna reference the video there. But essentially, think of these are just numbers, big, huge, prime numbers. And the idea here is you have these three numbers. Two of them must stay private, okay? But one of them is public, okay? And merging the three will give you the actual key that you want to exchange. So what do we actually do, right? So we have three, three keys, two private and one public, okay? And here's another combination. Merging the private and the public key gives you an unbreakable combination of the key that is also public, right? And that's safe to send. You can send this on the air unencrypted because it is extremely difficult to break these two right but it's also public and sending the private the other private key the public key also gives you an, an unbreakable public number combination okay so you have this you have this right and that's the the properties that you need to know let's go through tls 1.3 and here's how it happens right the client generates the first private key and also generates the public key okay and what it does it it sends the public key publicly 
and it merges these two with this math of a magic, okay? And it also sends this other number. So there's two numbers, one number here that is merged and one number that is public. And both of them are public. They are useless. If someone captured those, they are useless because these are public and this is public, okay? The servo, on the other hand, generates the other set of a private key, right? Which nobody knows, right? Nobody knows the private, the blue key, which is the private. Nobody knows the red key. That's the trick here, okay? So the server generates the, the private red key, right? And then it takes that combination, right, of the key and adds to it the red key. And that's uh, applicable. The moment it adds all the three, what do we get, guys? We get the beautiful golden key that we're going to use to encrypt future messages, right? So in this case, even if someone sniffs this, they don't give have enough information. So the client now doesn't have the symmetric key yet, right? It needs the red key, but you cannot send the red key just like that, right? So what we do essentially is we merge the red key and the public key, right, together, and we send them to the client, right? And that's okay because these are unbreakable, these two get together, right? The client receives it and it takes its private key, right? and adds it to this combination, right? So it gets the red, the pink, and the red, and the private key, and the, and the blue key. Now, emerge it, and they get the key. So we managed to exchange the keys, even if someone is sniffing here, they don't have enough information to break anything, right? Because this guy doesn't have the red. If, if you sniff it, they don't have the red, they don't have the, the blue, right? That's the trick here, okay? And then you can use the symmetry key to start encrypting and decrypting the traffic. You might say, Hussein, if it's kind of a similar thing, because if that red key got leaked, right, which is very highly unlikely, right, because it's very highly unlikely to get leaked this ephemeral key that we generate every session versus the actual private key of the server. That's different, right? Because, yes, so if they managed to get that key, which is just was generated just for that session, remember, it's just for that session. So, yeah, they will be able to read just that communication. The moment the connection is closed, they cannot see any other, other thing, right? Because, and plus, even if the attacker managed to get that key, there are millions of them because these keys are ephemeral. They get generated and destroyed, right? So, they are very unlikely to stay in memory for them to be heart bled, right? So this is just something to think about. But yeah, it's way more secure. TLS 1.3. And plus, if you notice, one round trip. Beautiful stuff, right? And uh, the same thing applies here, guys. This guy also sends a certificate. This guy sends uh, the request. And then, then, then OCSR request, OCSP request, and... Uh, to validate the certificate, all that jazz, all right? Maybe TLS extensions, uh, SNI, ALPN, everything in this beautiful one request. This is so underrated, guys, these TLS extensions. Probably I'm going to make another video just to talk about TLS extensions, right? Summary, what did we discuss? We discussed the TLS 1.2 and older problems. So if you coming in, if you have a web server out there, do yourself a favor, make sure it's uh, TLS 1.3, right? I think there is a website. All right, guys, so this is the website, cdn77.com. This is how it tells you whether the version is TLS 1.3 or not, your server, right? So you can type in your server, hussainnasser.com. Let's try that. Let's see if my server, I'm using Google's DNS, so I mean, uh, web server, so it better be, so yeah. I am using TLS 1.3, right? And if you do, I don't know. And uh, if I go to another website that doesn't have TLS 1.3, for example, I found out that actually Nginx are not using TLS 1.3, which kind of sucks if you think about it as, a, as an actual proxy. They, their website should use TLS 1.3, right? So, yeah, so I don't know.
it looks like uh, they don't use it right so yeah so always make sure that you're using the latest TLS version on your proxy on your server or whatever right and this is a quick thing to know probably if you configured your web server you know that you have used the certificate and you have your web server actually supports TLS 1.3 or not right the version of TLS okay and uh, yeah forward perfect forward secrecy even if an attacker of a shady one if a uh, crazy attacker recorded all your messages and and managed to get the private key of the server it's okay because they cannot get much out of it anyway right because think about it right because uh, what happens here is you are very ephemeral your keys are very ephemeral they generate every session right sometimes they say every message but i don't believe that's true because how do you generate with every message because that tls 1.3 will be very very slow and, and generate uh, keys with every message. So the overhead just doesn't make any sense to me, really. I might be wrong there. Uh, if there is a security engineer out there, might correct me, but I really doubt that uh, uh, with every single message that I send, I generate brand new keys, right? That just, the expense is just way too much, right? I think, right? and and we want to minimize that so i might be wrong though right so who knows all right so we talked about tls 1.3 guys different helmet all that jazz hope you enjoyed this video gonna see you in the next one what do you want me to talk about next write in the comment below see you in the next one bye